Hello, my name is Trider. Welcome to part five of the Temple of Time tutorial. Let's pick up right where we left off. So previously we had just done this phase here, so of course we're going on to the next one. But before we get started with that, there is a minor correction to make. Uh, last time, you remember, I had some confusion about these details right here with the stairs on top of the exterior buttresses because these other three didn't have them. I went back and looked at the reference model. This is one of these cases like that window down there where I forgot to copy and paste the updated version. Well, that's what happened here. So for all of these other ones, what you need to do is to... Uh, the detail on the front here is right, but on the side, we're going to need to add a couple more blocks like these two here and there on all of these three buttresses and then on the top and the bottom of the stone bricks we just laid down you want to come back and put down upside down stone brick stairs on top of those two on the bottom and then three on the top for both of those sides just like just like that there so wherever we have the red here we'll have stairs there and then back down here matching this pattern and that will correct uh, that little error there all right so uh, with that out of the way let's go back here to our usual spot and take a look at the next set of details now we've got uh, some gold ore and of course our uh, copper and dark prismarine and then die right behind that And then stone bricks here on the corner for the tower. Of course, this tower goes up quite a ways. So we're going to be building that uh, for quite some time. And get some altitude here, though. Have a little look. Uh, so last time we had finished off building the lowermost portions of the arcade. And now we were building the level that is going to be the Triforium. And you remember I told you the Triforium roughly corresponds to the level at which um, the, uh, the roof on the exterior of the aisles of the arcade uh, need to be built. That's so why we have one of those. And oh, I wonder why that's missing. I'm going to need uh, a filler block there, I think. All right, so now we have a division. You can see that our roof is um, going back in this section. But we do have some more detailing here for uh, the topmost portions of the windows. Just right here. And uh, we'll come back and take a look at the, the room and the stairs in a moment. Let's focus on getting the exterior set, and then we will do our interior detailing. So for all these windows on the sides here, this all repeating details. Once you do one of them, all the others are the same. So we get to the wall over here. Uh, quite a few filler blocks in this section. And then behind this over here, we have some, some oak planks to serve as uh, roof beams to help uh, hold everything up. The detailing around the back here, over the windows, and then for the roof back here as well. We're doing a sloped roof on a, a diagonal here for the octagonal detailing at the back, so it, it can look a little messy, but once we get it all together, it'll look pretty good from a distance.
All right, so here we are at the back along our center line, which means all these details we just took a look at are just repeated and mirrored on the other side of the temple. So let's go back here to the front and take a look at all that from the interior now. So we've got our very small windows here. That's all we had space for. There's some glass panes and some calcite and a chiseled quartz. The pillars in the corner. Uh, the torches are uh, just suggested placement torches. If you build this in survival, you're going to need many, many more of those. All right, let's turn here. Take a look at the detailing down the hallway. And our first couple of stairs. Of course, you remember these are going to be heading up to our little uh, side chapels that we have up in the, the flanking towers. All the way back in part one. Let's see, here we have our doorway. And the detailing on the inside of the room for that. It's just some very simple detailing. Just like so. Now let's take a look down the, uh, the, down the hallway of the Triforium. Because our Triforium back here is walkable. Mostly a lot of quartz and uh, deep slate tiles. You can see the numbering has to change a little bit because we have these, these two by two columns in the building. So occasionally we have these two by two sections that get propagated throughout the building as well. Uh, that did make some things more difficult because generally in Minecraft, if you keep as much things as possible to odd numbers and not even, it tends to it tends to work out better. Uh, but once you become more more proficient in your building skills, you can play around with the the even numbers a bit more because you'll have a good handle on exactly how to handle the problems when they arise, and and they will arise. Trust me. Uh, so, so back here we have the detailing for the, the wall and everything. We put our, our, our down our last bit of diamonds, I think, and I think there, there there might be a couple more diamonds up there or something. But for the most part, we've already put down all of those. So let's continue down the Triforium here. Of course, we have our double doors. That, uh, that got copied and pasted and rotated all wrong, so they're all facing the wrong way. Uh, but you want to have you just put in your, your double oak doors right here. And of course we have our stairs here, which are going to be heading up to the attic. And then we have our other set of uh, uh, doors here, which take us into the master short chamber. Now let's come back over here and take a look at the, at the master short chamber detailing. And the main reason we have the red carpet and not just another level for the flooring is because, well, I kind of ran out of space, really, because of the tight fit that the vaults had below the floor in this. It just worked out that way. So we put down a bunch of carpet to, to cover over our problems. Of course, in this, I mean, it is a red carpet, but I changed it to have the, uh, the same texture as, I think it's the, the, the red coral block. Just because I really like that texture. And it goes away once it's out of the water, and I really, you know, that was a shame. So I just, I just put it on my carpet instead. I think it looks a lot better than the uh, standard wool texture, but that's just me. And that's just, you know, texture pack shenanigans. All right, let's take uh, let's go back here and take a closer look at the walls now behind that. You probably saw that already. But let's take just a little bit of a closer look so we don't skip over any of the detailing. It's mostly just uh, chiseled quartz divided up into panels with uh, the deep slate tiles and everything. And behind that, we just have the, the oak uh, beams and everything for the... Uh, Raptors. All right, so here we are on our center line, which means I think we've taken a look just at everything we've got so far. So it's a really nice view, I have to say. 
all the way down there. Uh, and we can go on here to the next phase. All right, so starting over with all that again. We've got here on our, our center line. A bit more gold, dark prismarine, diorite, and tough. And everything, you know the drill. We do have now uh, our first little bits of um, uh, a waxed, uh, polished, uh, uh, cut copper here. Uh, I chose that to accentuate some of the detailing. I think I'm, I mostly use these for the decorative uh, finials throughout the building. I have to admit, I'm quite a fan of the cut copper block becoming one of my favorite blocks. I made it pair so nicely with that with that dark prismarine. But also the phase one blocks are quite nice as well. A good substitute for gold or something. Um, so here we are. I've got quite a bit of gold ore here in these corners. And then here the detailing for the towers. Alternating your, your cobblestone and your tuff in, in whatever random pattern you want. We've already talked laboriously about that. It just needs to be a random pattern. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. All right, we've got a bit of detailing here. And then another section of the roof back here as well. I think in one more phase after this we'll be done with the roof here. I think that there wasn't much space uh, below this roof so I just ended up filling the whole thing in with filler blocks. Uh, but I think ideally that should probably be air spaces and we should have more um, uh, more oak roof beams underneath that. Like we do at the back. All right, let me get a little altitude here. So you can see, once you do one of those, all the other ones are going to be exactly the same. Like so, until we get, of course, back here to the wall. Then we want to turn the corner here. And go along like so. Some raised detailing here. And detailing back here for the roof. Now you notice the roof back here, it doesn't follow the exact same slope that the, um, that the, uh, that, uh, that part of the roof did. Just because of how the, um, the roof sections back here worked out with having to bend it around. A bit more raised detailing here. And a bit more roof back there. Try not to go too fast because some of these roof sections can be tricky. Uh, but I think if you were able to get this far and you've already done all, all of the, the complex rib vaulting down below, this should be be a piece of cake compared to that. Uh, all right, so here we are at the back along the center line. So now that we've taken a look at the exterior, let's come back to the front and take a look at all of this from the inside. Most of this section is just being extended up from the previous phase. Some small detail changes on some of the courts, though. The hallway, as you can see, is just extended straight up here. Another stair at the end of it. Along there. Some courts to cap off the doorway. And then the room looks pretty much the same, with everything extended up there. So let's slide down the Triforium here, take a look at the detailing of that.
Now, not every uh, Gothic-style cathedral has a walkable Triforium. Some of them actually have uh, worked in windows on theirs by doing some shenanigans on the roof on the, the exterior. I don't particularly favor those designs. Uh, but I decided to make uh, this Triforium be walkable because uh, we did have to have a way to get up to the tower vestibule chapels up there and everything, so I wanted to to do that this way instead. It was, it was, a, it was a good fix for the problem. All right, so here we are. Uh, let's uh, continue down the hallway here, taking a look at the detailing in here where we finish off and start our new stairwells. And then over our doorway, we just got the upside down court stairs there. And then back here in the Master Sword Chamber, everything's pretty much going straight up on the walls for this at the moment. And here's our central line. So I think that covered that phase. So let's head on over here to the next one. All right, starting at, at our usual spot here. Bit more shiny cut copper there. Make sure to wax it now. And some detailing over here for the gold door and everything. Then stone bricks for the towers and the corners. A bit of detailing right here. And here we are, we have the last little bits, almost the last little bits of our roofing here. I think there might be one, one additional section. Uh, yeah, just looking over there. There's gonna be one more section of that and then the roof section for the Triforium is gonna be finished. We do have these little gaps here. Now these are gonna be forming the bottoms of what's going to be the, the flying part of our flying buttresses. I'll zoom out a little. So once you do one of those, the others are the same till we get down here to the tower. All right, here's the, uh, let's take a look at the exterior detailing first over the windows and for what's going to be the the buttresses along the back here and then we'll come back and take a look more closely at the uh the roof behind that since these sections are a little bit disconnected from each other now all right so let's go back over here and take a look at this more closely All right, there's our center line, so let's fly back to the front and take a look at all this from the interior, he said, for the, the, the 50th time, however many high we up, however many blocks high up we are, that's probably how many times I've said it. All right, so we've got a bit of um, deep slate tiles and quartz here and some calcite in the window frames. There's some very small windows. We do have a dummy window here. We didn't have the the detailing for the, the uppermost portion of the window got in the way, so we have to just kind of seal this off. 
Uh, but we just have a little dummy window there. For that, and you can see along here, the roofing off the hallway with, I believe these are going to be quartz slabs, if I'm not mistaken. Land and take a look. Yeah. So we are going to have some, some full quartz blocks here for uh, some, some lentils at various places underneath here, but otherwise the rest of it's going to be uh, uh, full, um, I mean, going to be slabs. I'm just going to break these so we can more easily see from the top which ones are going to be the full blocks. Like so there, extending your uh, stairs up that way. And then on the interior here, you can see we have some upside down quartz stairs. Right there to divide these sections off. And then going back down here, back down the Triforium, we're going to have this again. Here, I'm just, I'm going to break a couple of them, not all of them, but it's just going to be a little repeating pattern. Because it's going to, I think these blocks will look the same from the, the top. So you can see here this pattern, uh, it, it's going to match the um, deep slate tiles. But behind that, the rest of these, for the ceiling of the Triforium, you want to have those be slabs. So let's take a look at this from below for the detailing for the Triforium. And then let's come back here and take a look at it from above. So you can go in, go ahead and put in your full blocks just like so. And then come back and do your slabs after that if you want to. Right there, all the way down. And let's go back down here. And then just take a walk down our Triforium. For completeness sake, because we will be finishing off the most of the level of the Triforium. We're not quite finished with it yet, but like so. And once we get down here, it's a little bit more detailing right here for this archway above our big diamond uh, Triforce emblem. So here's the detailing down here for above our stairs. Right there. Of course, our stairs here, they go up to the attics. And then the detailing here for the doors. Uh, that come into the master sword chamber. All right, so here we are. Let's take a look at this. So we've got uh, uh, these overhanging blocks here, of course. They're, of course, going to be our arches. Our smaller arches in the Triforium. Just like so. It got a little messy trying to do gothic arches on a diagonal, so... You have to use your imagination in some places. It wasn't possible to do just the, the full pattern on those. And you can see behind here, you're just pretty much extending your walls straight up according to the pattern that we've already laid out. Okay, uh, next phase. Take a look here at the exterior. I believe we are finishing this off here. And we are going to now adding some some decorative uh, finials on top of that with, of course, the the cut copper, the the waxed cut copper blocks, just like so. And then we're alternating our cobble and our tuff around there. More detailing right there for the window frames. Going around the tower here. And we've got some floating detail on top of these raised elements here. 
And then what I believe, what I think is, yeah, the, what I believe is the very last sections of the roof that we have to put on here for the, the outermost sections of the Triforium. Now that you've built that, you can look back and you can see what I've done is I've incised these little chevrons into the pattern with the dark prismarine here, just like so. Uh, it's something you can really only see from a distance, but it does look pretty good, I think. And then over here for what's going to be the lowermost portions of the buttresses for our flying buttresses. Going to be these sections here, 2 by 5 And of course they're all going to be 2 by 5 for all these sections. And the same detailing on the exterior for the raised portions of the window frames. And the same detailing along here for the roof. On all, what is it, five, on all five modules of that. And then we get here to this wall here, and so it's a pretty simple pattern there. Then just straight across here for the detailing for the window frames, the raised, the, the, the raised window frames here, some more detailing here, and uh, these sections here. So let's scan by this section. Just a couple of blocks to put down on these. And then let's come back over here and take a closer look at uh, this section here. You can see also we're now going to be putting the ceiling on the Triforium and the Master Chamber. It occurs at, at a block level higher than the, the one going down that way did. And uh, we'll take a look at, uh, you might not want to go ahead and and uh, hold off placing the quartz on this yet. Because I'm pretty sure there's going to be more of these um, these full blocks and half slabs that we can't see until, unless we get in there from the bottom later. So hold off on that. Now let's go back here and take a look at everything from the interior now. You can see we're finishing off our very small little gothic arches. Well, you know, Minecraft. As good of a gothic arch as we can get with just a couple of blocks. Like so, you can see the arches all follow the same design down the Triforium, just like so. Once you do one of those, just do all the others the same. We get back here to the wall, which we cap off our little arch there, just like so. Uh, now let's go back to the start here, because we need to go back and take a look at, I think it's going to be this section. Right here. And then of course we have the ceiling for our uh, chamber. So let's uh, let's lay in and go in inside that and take a look at where the how that's gonna look. So you can see here where we had those uh, uh, quartz stairs. They're gonna be carrying these beams of quartz all the way across. And in the middle of those, that's where we want to place in the um, the uh, half slabs here. Three by three on those half slabs. Everything else is full blocks and stairs on the corners here. And uh, that'll be your little vestibule storage room for, for whatever you want to use this room for. Uh, that'll be done. Uh, so we finished off the lowermost portions of the Triforium. So now I think on top of that we just have some filler blocks here that we already took a look at really. Like so. And then we have the detailing back here for these the stairwell. The stairwell that's going to be heading up to our attic. Let's uh, go back down here though. And let's go along our center line. And I'm going to break some blocks 
here so we can see them from above, so we can differentiate the full blocks from the half slabs. Because as you can see here, once we get in the full blocks, uh, then you can just go through and everything else is going to be a half slab. Uh, I'm going to go, this, is, this can be a little confusing, so I'm going to do half of the entire thing here. Just so we don't get uh, messed up on this part. Alright, that should be half of it. So if we take a look at this from the top down, you can see the full blocks here, and the uh, the chiseled, and the the uh, the pillar blocks, and all the other quartz blocks here, except for the ones on the on the outside here, all these interior ones I think should be half slabs. All right, so let's take a look at that. And through here, and then let's take a look at this, just edge on. Right here, uh, this is one of these sections where there just was just one block too few to get, to be able to bend this, to be able to bend, to be able to bend this flat pattern into a diagonal. So, I mean, ideally we would have wanted to have had it done, done something like that. But we were we only had two blocks to play with, so instead of having a flat arch, I just decided to have it go off another block in this direction up here. So the pattern it doesn't it doesn't quite match the flat ones, even though it should. But you know, it's one of these things where we had to cheat a little bit to uh, to, to get something that still looked nice. I don't think anybody will ever notice that. Um, but I wanted to point it out, because sometimes we do have to make concessions for, for various things. Uh, Alright, next phase. Uh, over here, starting right here at our torch. And we now have uh, some stairs. Right here, stone brick stairs, just like so. And some filler blocks behind that. Full blocks on the edges here, though. And that's because I believe these are the... The lowermost portions of what are going to be our window sills. For our very large windows, we're going to have up in the clerestory. And of course, the, 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 the word clerestory mostly means a, a, an upper arcade of windows. Which, if you remember from, from the tour, as that is indeed what we have up there. There may be another name for it. It escapes me at the moment. Uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the Gothic architectural details didn't did tend to pick up various names or various aspects of it as they went along. It's a, it can be quite a mouthful of vocabulary terms. I don't quite remember them all myself. A right, couple of copper blocks here, and then uh, the the uh, stone brick stairs here again for our window sills, and then just uh, the stone bricks out here for all the buttresses, and then of course the window frames behind that. Once you do one of those, uh, all five should match each other. So detailing back here for the wall. And we got this uh, window sill here. In the corners. And more stairs. And so on. I will come back. We'll take a look at the, that in detail later when we take a look at the interior. Uh, let's back up a moment, take a look at the exterior disconnected portions. Right here. And then we'll come back and take a look 
at uh, the octagonal section uh, right now. And I think what's going to be behind those are going to be, I think that's mostly stairs. Stairs and full blocks of quartz. For the interior here, let me just stop and take a look at that. Yeah, that's going to be uh, some stairs and some full blocks of quartz. Uh, but we'll come back to that. Let's go back now to the start and take a look at all this from the interior. Which, uh, this should be an easy, easy phase for the interior. All we're doing is we're putting down an upside-down quartz stair line all the way across here for our cornice to divide off the, our uh, triforia. And once we have done that, that's going, to, that's going to mark the end of the triforia. Because the triforium will extend from this block to this block up here only. So if we back up a little bit, we can see how the stairs... Uh, uh, how I've had that outline, the level of the Triforia. Uh, you do want to have the quartz behind this, though, because that's going to be visible when we start putting in uh, the glass for our windows, I think. So let's slide down the Triforium here, take a look at all this from the inside. And then I just extend the stairs. Just we're, making, we're making a big rectangle of these stairs just all the way inside uh, the nave of the church. Uh, so back here we want to have, um, I think that this is going to be uh, roof tiling. I'm pretty sure. We had to cut it pretty close on this section. So I'm just going to show you this here from the top down to start with. And then let's focus in here on the detailing we have here. Because uh, this little section this is going to be the floor of our uh, uh, tower chapels. That so we have two of these, remember? we got two of these on either side. Right here. So as we come up the stairs, the stairs will end here. At our little chapels right there. And then I think uh, you can use the, the filler blocks to count out where exactly where those should be. That shouldn't be too hard. Uh, if we want to go back down here, though, let's take a look at our next, uh, our next level. We're going to have another floor surface here. Where our stairs end this section. Uh, these are, are going to go, uh, these are part of the stairs that go up to the attic, but they stop at a little chapel here first. And then they're going to continue on over here to go on up that way. So let me just show you all that from the top down. And uh, then let's take a look at this section here from the top down real quick. And then land. You can see here what we're doing with the upside down stairs here. We're wrapping these octagonally around the room. We want to have them face this way to start with three of those, and then once we get to the 45 degree diagonal, we want to reverse that and have them go the other way. Right there. They're going this way, and then you see they start reversing and going back down that way. And then you want to do that, of course, just all the way around the room until we make our nice octagon, like so. All right, let's continue on. Next phase here, detailing with the the, uh, the copper right here. And then behind that, we have the lowest most portions of the window frames. You remember the window frames, they're all framed out of calcite. So here we are with those, with a, with a really big, uh, big bay window, or a really big uh, combination bay and rose window at the front. Just like so, detailing for the corner. And then the more calcite for the window frames. Some detailing back here for that there. And oh, looks like there's another one of these places where 
some of the filler blocks are poking out that I didn't notice. Right there, you want to fill that in for sure. I mean, nobody's going to crawl back there and notice that, but you know, you might want to fix it anyway. And we've got uh, the detailing here for the towers, and we're, we're, we're roofing off this little flat section here. And you can see now we're putting in the calcite for the window frames for our little tower chapels. And then let's go ahead and pause here and take a look inside this. Of course, we do have a bit of uh, upside down stairs here, some upside down quartz stairs here for some railing for our stairs. Safety first. And then just some simple detailing in the corners for the courts. And here is the detailing for the, the roofing for this section here. It does have a slight slope to it, but otherwise it's just, just a little flat section. All right, let's continue back, uh, back over here. These little sections, we're just extending up all of the cut cor uh, copper, and then you're extending up again with the buttresses out here as well. And then behind those, we are extending up the, uh, or rather extending along the calcite here, interrupted by just a little bit of cobble and tuff. And, oh, I see more of these places where things are poking out where they shouldn't be. They, these should be, uh, these should, should be stone bricks right here. Yep. Every single one of these little corners we have poking out there, that should be uh, stone bricks. You may have already caught that from the previous phase, but I didn't, so... If you did catch that, kudos. Alright, so once you have done that all the way down here, we then turn the corner. And head off this way with some calcite again, and the corners back here. As well, let's stop here and take a look now inside this. You can see here we now have some wooden stairs because we're, we're just going up to the attic at this point. This is really where the nice portion of the cathedral stops at this point here. And we're just going to have the more more wooden structures uh, that take us up to the, the attics and everything. So otherwise in here we have a bit of calcite right here. And we are going to have an extra block over here in the corner, just because of how that uh, how, how how that had to work out. And I think that's because uh, there wasn't enough room to put another big window over here, so we just had to put a wall. So this calcite here, that's really the baseboard of a wall. The only two windows are going to be here and here, if memory serves. Pause here, take a look at that from the top down. And then let's continue on on the exterior here. Take a quick look at these detailing here. We're extending up the um, the cut copper and the cobble and the tuff and everything, like so. And then back here, the detailing, of course, for the the, the clear story of the, the uh, octag uh, octagonal chamber back here at the back. And I think uh, that's going uh, that's going to be all that there is to do for the roofing on this section. In that section, we're going to be doing any roofing again until we get until we get uh all the way up there, it's probably that, that maybe part six or seven before we start getting off into that. We're not going to get to it today, obviously. 
that's going to be uh, quite a bit higher. Uh, so let's go back to the front here. Take a look now. We're just doing the calcite all the way across. Right here. I like to hide torches up here but just because uh, you can't see them from down below. So it's a pretty good place for hidden lighting up here. The only I, I've thought about doing a full, full tutorial on hidden lighting, but it's so like it's so situational that um, there's there's not really anything I can do in a, in a full tutorial just on that. It's, it's sort of something that you have to get a feel for in each each individual building. But I mean the the. All you need to know for it really is it's right there in the name hidden lighting. So as long as you can't see it from whatever angle you're looking at, then it's considered to be hidden, right? Uh, sometimes you do want to make features of your lighting if you can't hide it. If you may as well just decorate it. All right, here's our center line here. So let's go over here. And the same sort of detailing here and the octagonal section. Uh, I, I never, I didn't include them, but in this, if you want to go and like get yourself some some uh, copper rods, some lightning rods, and just like stack two and th two or three on top of each other, you can put some candles on top of those, and everything. I mean, for a cathedral, a, a lot of candles would look really nice in here. I think uh, to complement the carpet, I would recommend a lot of uh, red candles if you want to do that in here. It would look quite nice, I think. Quite nice indeed. All right, let's continue on to uh, the next phase. Right here, one little block of cut copper there, and that's going to finish off this decorative finial. And uh, that'll, that'll finish off this entire uh, lowermost uh, detailed section. Behind that, you can see what we're doing with the glass. Uh, we've already talked about the, the alternating of the bullets and the pane, so I'm not going to go into that again. But you want to do uh, that there, and then stone bricks everything on the corners, and just here for your windows. Of course, I've got all this light blue stained glass, but if you want to have yourself uh, some prismatic windows, you can just do multicolors, just all, all your favorite colors. Uh, some people, I've seen cathedrals, they will do, uh, they will do all their windows individually. They'll like try and make intricate patterns in just each one. Uh, I, I like not to do that myself, just because of the, the amount of extra work. Uh, like if I wanted to do that with this one, I'd probably just take a brush and then do a variable replace on the blocks and the panes to make them multicolored. With like red and purple and, uh, and blue and everything. Maybe a bit of green, a bit of yellow, something. Uh, well, I was supposed to be more like the, the, the yellow and the lime. You want to go with a brighter, brighter green, maybe. Uh, but these windows are definitely where Minecraft stained glass shines. A couple of uh, blocks here, just some half slabs, and a couple of full blocks of stone bricks here to finish off uh, the ribbing on this little section of that roof. And then uh, all the roofing on the lowermost sections is done with that. Let's go ahead and take a look inside here. Got a couple of uh, quartz stairs in the corners, a couple of half, half slabs right there on the safety rails. for our tower chapels. And of course we get these one little blocks here to finish off the patterns for the decorative finials on those. And then just uh, stone bricks for the flying, uh, the lowermost sections of the flying buttresses here. All right, so back here, same detailing for all these windows, you can see. Once you do one of these windows, all the other ones are exactly the same, just all the way down the building. 
And then we get to the wall and turn the corner here. Save detailing on the windows again for these little chapels. And then you can see here that uh, one of these ended up being a wall, not a window. All right, let's back up a minute. Let's take a look at the exterior detailing. Same sort of thing we did. Right there at the front. And then back here, let's take a look now at the detailing for the windows for the clear story of the uh, octagon. You can see we've got some panes in there as well. I'll zoom in on that in a moment. Let's take a look at this. A little bit closer. You can see we've got just a couple of panes here. A couple of extra ones. That's because when you put a pane here, it doesn't connect with anything, so we had to put a couple more in order to, to close up the gap. So we didn't want to have any air gaps visible in our windows. So on, on our diagonal windows, we do have to have some extra blocks on occasion. Just how it works out. Uh, let's go... Uh, so Let's take a look at this uh, interior chapel here, while, just while we're here. You probably already saw this, but let's take a closer look here at the stairs. So you can see you got the stairs here and oh and we've got some some extra blocks poking out here like, like we do. Wanna fill those in there. And then we're just gonna do the, the oak the oak stairs here. I think they're gonna, gonna go up this way, they're gonna turn, they're gonna start going back this way, then they're gonna turn here and start going up that way. If you remember how it worked out from part one in the tour, we had to take a rather circuitous route with the stairs. All right, so detailing back here for the window panes. It's like so, no surprises. I think I can go pretty quick on this. You probably already built this section. Because it's so thin. I mean, one side looks like another. And then uh, back here, we have a bit of calcite back here, like so. Because if uh, memory serves, we do have some, some uh, calcite ribbing up here for the, the window tracery. That's right, our old friend, the window tracery, is slowly beginning to make its return. All right, detailing back here. Uh, these are some dummy windows. You can see when they have the black here, they're just filled in window frames, really. We had to have three of those just because of the design of the Temple of Time, because we had this big wall separating off the chambers. So it ended, it ended up having to have three of our windows filled. And up here in the octagon, we can only have uh, five windows of the, uh, five of the, five of them be glass. Originally, I did try and make uh, only one filled in, and I was trying to make something more complicated off over here. This tower wasn't here. I was trying to make a window go off that way. But when I was trying to route the stairs and fix in the detailing with the window and make it match the rest of the octagonal sections here, it was a, it was a big pain. I ended up scrapping that idea and filling it in because it just wasn't working. All right, I think that's uh, that phase beat to death. So let's go on to the next one and see what kind of damage we can do. All right, uh, next phase here, a bit of calcite at the front and the uh, glass panes here for the windows. And then the calcite again and everything, the cobblestone and the tuff between that. And then just a little bit more detailing here. We're, we're almost finished with doing these little side details. And then let's, um, let me see. So for, okay, it's going to be, I think, a slight 
change in this section. So I'm going to continue on along here with the clear story windows. We're going to take a look at those, just sliding all the way down, just like so. It's just a repeating pattern you can, you can see. For all these windows, just all the way to the back, where we get all the way to the wall here. And then we're going to pause, uh, I'm going to pause here for a moment, and then come back here. Because our tower has now become completely detached from the rest of the building. Here, so we're going to start at the front here. You can see, well, once you do one side of this tower, the other three sides are pretty much the same. For the windows and everything. like so and the detailing we're, we're done doing we're done doing these so we're now just building up our lowermost portions of the flying buttresses here or one two three and four of those all right so let's return to this point back here and let's take a look in here real quick though this detailing right here for this is a this is a little, uh, uh, it's like a starburst tracery up here at the top. It's a detail from the original Temple of Time I tried to reproduce. At least it's, it's, it's the one from uh, Ocarina, that detailing is from that. I'm going to try to, to recycle that motif as best we could. All right, we've got the wall here, right there, and let's pause, pause right here for a moment and take a look inside this tower here. And then the stairwell here is, as well. Uh, remember to, to come back and fill in, fill in those little blocks there. All right, continuing on with uh, the windows here. Got some a uh, couple of extra panes here now in the in the diagonals. Right there, and then we're of course extending these up. As well, we finished all the, the cut copper on the decorative finials there for the window frames. So all those, uh, those complicated sections are done. I think the next couple of phases probably should be somewhat easier. Um, because we're going to be going straight up on a lot of it. Uh, so next section here, calcite. Let's take a look at all this from the interior real quick. For these windows. Uh, we probably don't need to, but uh, just, just for the sake of completeness, I want to come back here and do that. All right, that's going to be on our center line. So now that we have done that, I think I can, uh, I think I can keep going for for one more phase today. Not sure how long we've been going for. It feels like over an hour so far. Uh, so a bit of calcite here for the windows. Same detailing, you know, the drill on the windows and the corners right here. A little bit of cut copper detailing for this. Uh, Right there. Let's uh, slide down the windows here. Repeating patterns for the windows, just like we've been doing. Stand everything up, stone brick level, reverse all the panes, put in the calcite. You know the drill. Let's go back over here to the tower, though, and take a look at that. The tower is going to be much the same for the calcite and the stone bricks and everything. Just like so. Just going straight up with pretty much everything.
Also straight up here for the buttresses on the outside, four of those straight up with the stone bricks. Back here for the walls, again, stone brick levels. Same detail for the windows and the corners, just like so. And right here for the wall at the back. And then along here for the octagonal section again. For the glass. And extend up your four buttresses at the back. With the stone bricks, let's uh, pause here, take a look at the vestibule chapel from the interior for a moment. Along the wall here, we've just got quartz just straight across here. Like so, chiseled quartz around the door frame. And this little uh, lintel here. Uh, fill that in with some cobble there. Uh, let's go back to the front, take a look at this from the inside. Just like so. Uh, I don't think we probably need to take a look at the inside. But we're going to. Just for the sake of completeness. Here's the detailing for the calcite uh, starburst tracery. Right there. And for the detailing on the interior of the octagon. All right, and there we are on the back on the center line. So uh, I think I can get through one, just one more phase. Um, I don't know how many we've gotten through today. Maybe, maybe, maybe 10 or 12, I don't know. Quite a few. Uh, so here at the front, you can see again, same detailing, everything I just said, just a, a, a will apply to this phase, I think. As uh, same as the last one, but because we're going up one block at a time, we're just you know, we're, we're going to take a look at it in sequence. Because a lot of these windows, um, we're just going we're going to be going straight up for quite a lot of this. Right there for the windows, and let's come back here and take a look at this. We're going to start at the front over here. Like so. And you can see now we've got two blocks of diorite forming here. And this is because this is the lowermost portions of the arch for our flying buttresses. Yes, that's right. We're, we've finally gotten all the way to the point where we can have some fun. And we're, we're, we're going to be building now the lowermost portions of our flying buttresses. Right here in those. So you want to have two blocks of diorite. On, on the side of those, just like that, for all four of those. And then don't, don't forget the extra two for our towers here, because I integrated these two flying buttresses into the tower. Right there. Uh, back here, detailing for the, uh, take a look at the interior later, detailing for the exterior. For the walls, uh, these walls are so paper thin, I don't think we need to take a dedicated look at the interior of this. We do have a little buttress here. I mean, I know it's attached to a wall, but we still had to, it still looked nice to have it, so it's, it's still there. Uh, detailing here for now the stairwell, though, you can see it's just, it's now just a combination of cobblestone and tuff. Now, because we're, we're heading up to the, the uppermost portions of the attic, where people aren't supposed to go. So we didn't use any of the nice materials on that, of course. We only wanted to use the nice materials and stuff people would see. And then we use all the cheap stuff, or the stuff people can't see. All right, uh, now for the buttresses on the exterior here, you can see that these docks of diorite are offset. And that is because you can, you can kind of see that down below here. We have our, our, uh, our um, what is it, the, 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 the roof line ridges here, the, the, the going at this angle. Well, the, the, uh, the flying buttresses are going to be following that same angle. Uh, even though uh, these, these buttresses here don't, 
but where they connect and go over here, they do. So they're gonna they're gonna be they're, they're gonna be the same type as these over here, but we're gonna have to be bending them as we go. So we're gonna be free bending on a a, a, a flying buttresses uh, in uh, in midair. That's gonna be fun. It took a couple of times for me to get it just right, I think. So all you really all you really have to do is follow the block uh, placement. All right, let's go back to the front, take a quick pan around the interior. And you can see for the windows and everything. I'm just going to go kind of quick on this one. Uh, detailing for the starburst with calcite. And then for the dummy windows here at the octagon. And uh, that's all there is for that phase. I could still talk a little. I think I've got I've got one more phase in me, so we're gonna we're gonna do this one here. All right, same detailing for the windows, just like so. Let's just slide all the way down. Down that. Just a repeating pattern for the windows. Once you do one of those, all the others are the same. And then back here, you can see we're just stacking out the diorite with the lowermost portions of the flying buttress. It's like so. Ever since I was little, the, the, the flying buttresses have always been my, my favorite parts of these buildings. They just look so nice. Even though they're a purely structural component, the, 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 the way they were implemented makes them look really nice. Which is not something you see today, unfortunately. In, in modern architecture, they'll just put a straight steel beam in there and, and, and somehow that's supposed to be aesthetically pleasing. Which is, of course, not. Ah, well... If we're lucky, within our lifetimes, we will see the end of modern architecture. And return to, to something more appropriate, I think. All right, detailing here for, of course, the, the towers and everything, the windows and the corners, just everything the same. Like so, let's pause here, take a quick look inside. And the detailing back here for the, oh, for the, uh, that's supposed to look like that. Uh, and then we've got uh, corners. A couple extra blocks there and extend up your staircase like so. Let's take a look now here at the, uh, Clear story walls for the octagonal section. And then the buttresses as well, stone bricks and extend up the diorite. For all of those. So let's go back to the front and take a pan around the interior real quick. And the calcite sunburst tracery details right there. And inside the octagon here. And then uh, that, I think, it's going to be all the time we have for today, so I hope you are enjoying the Temple of Time Cathedral build. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.